Hill Guard match. Well, as I was saying, I think this. I personally think this is a really nice Imperial Guard map. All right. Nice places for bunkers. Nice places to get the Sentinel mobile and exploit its speed. Yeah, it's actually uh, it's a pretty spread out map. Like it, it doesn't look like it's so much, but like those external, the the Eastern VP and the Western Power Node, like are way out there. Mm. In the end, like Sentinels, they're what they really excel at is kind of doing raking maneuvers on like capping units because they're faster and they don't bleed and they are really good at attacking units off cover. Definitely right. Oh, I gotta update my scoreboard here. Grunk and Badash zero to zero. So I've been playing a little Imperial Guard lately. Against Orcs, I find one of the things that's tougher about Orcs compared to other races uh, is that they usually have a lot more early range DPS with the Shooto Boys, uh, puts a lot of pressure on the Sentinel, gets it to move back a little more quickly than uh, a lot of other races. Although on the other hand, I think Imperial Guard is better than a lot of other races early on at dealing with the tanky melee heroes. So I think the war boss uh, can be very well controlled by the Sentinel, uh, just the range fire power coming out of the Guardsmen. Uh, and then you can have secondary melee counters like Catachandels. Uh, and we do see those very typical builds, double shooter boys, double Guardsmen into the Sentinel. Yeah, I've heard, uh, I was just talking to Twalali and uh, he was telling me that he always goes for the Guardsman first these days instead of the Sentinel, since you can't really get that initial harass in nearly as easily as you used to be able to. Of course, in retail, you get the stomp right out of the gate, so you can just send that Sentinel right into enemy territory, stomp a squad, probably force it off. But since that's not an option, you get the Guardsman first, get that extra cap in, and then bring out the Sentinel as support in the, the second engagement. That's a good point. You can still harass a little bit just with range firepower. Uh, potentially get like a unit off a point if they start bleeding too much although the sentinel's damage is not that high uh, but i guess you can't like, stomp someone off a point and like stomp them off their their natural power or something i think there's a counterpoint to be made though because the earlier the sentinel comes out the less likely there is to be like you know big shooters out so the more most effective point is when it's right at the start of the game and i find Personally, that when IG excels, it's when they deny map control rather than having themselves. Like, if they have equal map control, it is less good for them than if they have absolutely no map control and your opponent has absolutely no map control because you are very good at defending territory, whereas he has to go on the offensive. I think one of the things I've seen out of Tor Ali, with, uh, especially with double sentinel plays, is he sometimes get, gets very close to, or if he doesn't get close to, sometimes he actually does it, where he practically wins the game in Tier 1 uh, with Sentinels, just denying the map, uh, even sometimes getting all the way up uh, into his opponent's base. Yeah, it is, it is very strong at keeping up map pressure, but I've been working on a few uh, Space Marine builds to kind of take that out, because that used to be a massive nightmare for me. Uh, full power farm already down for bad ash. Yeah, he's bringing uh, those, uh, or rather Grunk's bringing the Catachins right out. He just went for the node off the bat and then getting the getting the Catachins and then dropping the generator post that purchase. So similar to the way Dark Riku goes for those fast assault space marines. He just picks up the node and uh, luckily for Grunk as well, he does have two of the, the two contested power nodes, so I mean, on their own, it's not that big a deal, but the extra 10 power a minute will start stacking up so long as you manage to hold on to that and allow him to get a couple extra upgrades. So, Warboss going for the boss pull. Uh, Katachan Devil's already out. Going to be very good. Uh, disrupting the Shooter Boys, as well as providing that secondary melee counter against the Warboss or the Slugger Boys with the Shotgun Blast. Yes, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I feel like Vadash is going to have to get something else here in Tier 1 to do with what's currently on the field. These three initial Orc squads are a good starting build, but when you start dealing with that that heavier stuff like the Catachins coming out here, it's going to be a little difficult to deal with the Commissar, the Sentinel, and the Catachins while taking, you know, DPS from the Guardsmen or what have you. I think Grunk is starting to overextend a 
little bit with his Commissar, as well as even with his Sentinel. Uh, he does force off one of the Shooter Boys, but his Commissar is going to go Ooh. down. Very early Hammer Commissar right off. on the top of the head. And he is, I mean, he's also uh, extending his Sentinel without repair support. Because he has one Sentinel capturing, uh, and I just, I mean, the Sentinel's still alive, he will get the repairs, but I just want to be, I think you should be very careful, uh, specifically against Orcs, uh, just with that early range CPS. And oh, now certainly. We're all getting, and uh, wow, actually, up. Grunk actually gonna keep the tier 1 pressure on, also bringing out a s artillery spotter squad. So Bad after end. losing his, after losing his hero, says, not a big deal, gonna get the spotter squad, gonna keep some pressure on these orcs. I guess his real plan here is just to keep those shooters from ever really being able to deal their DPS. If he can now come back, drop smoke bombs, harass with the catechins, uh, and, you know, keep microing that sentinel around. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. Between old and reliable, uh, the regular artillery shot, as well as the smoke bomb, the shooter boys shouldn't be able to do a whole lot. Uh, Bad Ash is definitely gonna want to split them, so that at least only one will get disrupted at a time and not both of them. Uh, but it looks like Bad Ash is, really wants to do something about the Sentinel. So we got Shooter knobs as well as the big shooters. Shooter these uh, cool Sentinels in a lot of trouble. He's microing yeah, around and falls over. All right. So that's one of the things I find difficult about this matchup personally. Uh, just that Orcs have so much more uh, ability to put pressure on the, on the uh, Sentinel early on. And those, those shooter knobs, those in addition to giving more damage, they also have 100% fire on the move. Yeah, it's a lot. It's something you don't consider. Oftentimes, people will get a little close to the shooters and then back up and kind of forget the, how the range and the DPS just continues oh, to pour in. We might have a wipe on the. Uh... Oh man! And finishing oh, off oh. with a little panache right there, dropping a grenade right on that poor slugger boy's head. And he's actually glitching around on my team, on my screen. He got hit so hard. So he used, he used an IED to kill that slugger. Like, it would have used it had hard boys in it right from the start, but it didn't matter. It did that much damage. It's brutal. Man, and it uh, looks like Grunk just has a solid grasp on this match already. Bad Ash floating like mad. He's got 700. I don't know. I guess he's just holding out for tier 2, but he needs... When someone goes heavy tier 1, you need to respond in kind. He did manage to take that Sentinel out, but there's still 4 infantry squads on the field. Catechins obviously stand on their own, and the artillery squ spotter squad, in combination with the Guardsman and the Commissar, as we saw up top, doing a number, uh, at least holding those shooter boys down, if not doing some reasonable damage. Well, I mean, Bad Ash is replacing his Slugger Boys, and he actually decides to go to Tier 2 right after that. He's still he's still holding his Power Farm, so he's not in too bad of a position. The more important thing is how well, how poorly he's doing in map control, really. Like, his war boss is now coming to retreat. Gronk has got a very nice grip on map control. I would have gotten up to four units, like, back up to four squads before going T2, and used that flow earlier. Yeah, he was floating for a while. I think he was kind of indecisive. Uh, losing the sluggers, I guess, was probably, you know, a surprise for him. He thought those were fine until suddenly they disappeared under some catechin explosives. I'm actually wondering if replacing the sluggers was not a great choice, unless he really wants to get a vehicle into two. Uh, at least just the way the Imperial Guard composition works out with all the melee counters that uh, Grunk has. Sluggers may not have been the best choice. He may have just uh, instinctively decided to uh, replace the unit because he lost it. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't want he like, his idea is he did not want to spend power before going tier two. So the most logical way to do that is to get sluggers rather than shooters. That's a good point. Well, both players are heading into tier two. Some nice artillery strikes coming down, and there's still an improvised explosive right there. He doesn't want to get too close. That will still explode if he fires it down. Oh. Oh, making me nervous right oh. there. I think, yeah, I think Grunk should have just detonated it. Definitely. No, I think he just forgot about it. Like, yeah, he's, he's distracted by that retreat. I think. Stressing those sluggers right now. He is going to need to get those guardsmen out. Ooh, they're going to take a nice chunk off of those guardsmen, too. Must have connected a few shots with that leader. More importantly, look at map control. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a very red map right now. Grunk just laying on the pressure, not relenting at all. Commissar Lord has just been hitting and fading. I mean, he's been managing to take all that map control and still like put pressure on Bad Ash, like threaten his farm. He didn't manage to get anything that time, but he was sitting right there before he 
before uh, Badash managed to finally push him off. Catechin's now Go. moving in, trying to put some melee pressure. Nice use of aiming was that to hold them still for the time being, but the flare goes down, cuts that short. A couple Catechins start falling. He wants to pull those back before he starts bleeding. Even if he manages to get these big shoes in melee, he's, me those Catechins are really damaged. Finally pulls it back, but at the loss of three Catechins, they're not an or they're not a cheap squad to reinforce. Three boy is a really good choice. Super solid against IG as long as he doesn't get a Chimera. I think even with the Chimera, like the Weird Boy still adds enough pressure on his own to like take a couple shots at that. Like the Weird Boy, I mean, I feel like Orcs not picking a Weird Boy in tier two against Imperial Guard is just just hindering yourself. I've seen it used so effectively. I mean, look at that already. Just. Uh, Removing those squads from the battle, the Zap's still going to be bouncing around. Bounces over to the artillery, finally pulls everything back, and this is the first solid push that Badash has gotten. He managed to take that on and, and push him off the field. Uh, right now he needs to get some map control back, needs to start putting some pressure on. Uh, Grunks in Tier 2 has the resources shortly to get himself a Chimera, which considering all these infantry squads on the field is, is kind of a no-brainer purchase. Yeah, I think the Camaro will be a pretty good choice considering um, if the Guardsman squads get hit, like, even once uh, by that Weird Boy shot, they're probably going to be in a position where they would have to retreat if they were not able to reinforce. Uh, it, you can also jump them into the Camaro to avoid uh, getting hit by that Weird Boy shot. That Commissar just heading headlong into swarms of orcs. He does not care. He's in trouble. <laughs> Finally realizes he should probably get out of there. I feel like he's been trolling around a little bit, just kind of running around and distracting uh, Badash, uh, keeping Badash's attention away from some of the real threats, or even just keeping him away from capturing the, the points. Yeah, which is funny because normally we see that's how the war boss is used for the orcs, and we're kind of seeing a change of roles here. Commissar is completely unupgraded. Oh, Runk wow. Skipping tier 2 entirely and going to tier 3. Oh, that might be a little brazen. We're going to have to see. I feel like the weird boy that's out right now is really going to be able to deal with everything he has. But he's going to go for it. It looks like he's got he's got the full farm. Uh, but all things considered, what's he going to get in tier 3 as soon as he hits? He's still going to have to wait a while on that power. Uh, I think he's giving uh, maybe giving his brother a little bit of a chance to get back into the game, perhaps. <laughs> well, I mean... Look at it this Go way, ahead. though. Like, right now, Badash is being really quite passive. He's getting 1vp, he's just was removing and letting Grunk get T3. And what has he accomplished since Grunk has been teching T3 for almost all of it? Capping 1vp. Far too passive. Yeah, I mean, he also has most of these units grouped up. They're not actually fighting anything right now. He still has a, a side power node that he could be capping with something. Uh, he doesn't want... He might not want to split them up too much, but I mean, he still has his units just kind of sitting around here doing nothing. Well, he, he got he got the he got the three, uh, triple cap up. Let's have that triple cap. Uh, if he keeps that for a little while, we'll be able to even out the VPs a little bit. Uh, looks like uh, Badash knows where those infiltrated catachans were. Ooh, our boys is gonna put that commie in trouble. Yeah, Commissar had to fall back. He was trying to poke and prod at these sluggers a little bit. Managed to get a, a reasonable connection with that artillery, artillery shot. shot. Should have been put further back. Yeah, he didn't quite lead it properly. Oh man, here comes the weird oh, no, boy, this Zap. Is this is trouble. If that yeah, weird I mean, boy lands like a shot. If not, the generator farm should Guardsman's go down so right here. Oh my Guardsman's gosh, look at that Zap. Alright, looks like the... Ooh, fortunately, it jumped to the Sluggas instead. Those Sluggas need to get over Catechans. to the Catechins. They stall for a little bit. I think, yeah, this is part of uh, Grunk's gamble. He almost has enough to get a Lehman Russ out on the field, which would be somewhat tough to deal with, but Badash is floating, maybe just to... Um, actually, he now goes to Tier 3. Uh, we'll but look at the map suddenly. He spent that time going into Tier 3, and we can say that, you know, he... Maybe Badash was being a little bit passive, but at the same time, Grunk was just sitting in the corner next to his base, unable to do anything for the time being. Couldn't really approach the Weird Boy Blob, gambled on his Commissar, taking out those Sluggers, which he was unable to do, and then almost lost his entire power farm because of it. Exactly. So, big gamble going out to Tier 3. He does now have that Lehman Russ. Uh, Badash, 
I mean, with the wreck he's got, he could get tank busters or a Luda in addition to whatever else he wants to get. Uh, definitely has a lot more wreck than power, though. <laughs> Racing Jenny says in chat. All right, so we're renaming this map from Fedra's Folly to Grunk's Gamble. <laughs> As it is, he is gambling on putting on free gens for Grunk if he can hold it, which he probably can for now. Yeah, I, I mean, the war I mean... boss is there. The Catechins and the Guardsmen will be able to harass him a bit, but... Man, those Catechins right. upgraded, no, though. No, no, wow, no. look hey, at those hey, chunks of health coming off. How should shoot the war boss? How should shoot that war boss? I mean, war boss doesn't actually have that much of a good shot of getting him away from that power if he, uses, if he does it right. Yeah, here we go. So now, free gens for Grunk. Yeah, that was, on. that was a bit silly. Alright, so now Grunk is going to have a nice power income. Or at least well, he's got bit. to bring that Lehman Russ up to defend that right now. That tank is moving on up, and there's really nothing that's going to be able to do with that. I mean, Bad Ash is, has plenty of requisition. He should be able to handily buy himself a squad of tank busters and still be ready to go tier 3 if that's what he chooses to do. But for the time being, that Lehman Russ is going to come in big shot right off the bat. Catechins get stunned, but that tank is just going to start blasting away at Shooter Boys. Two more go down in the next hit, launched into the air. Oh man, Catechins getting knocked over. Did manage to take out a couple Catechins to kind of even that out, and going to start pegging a little bit at the Lemon Rust tank. Ooh, upgraded oh, to the yeah. Executioner. I think that's a poor choice, simply because you look up. Loose attack is coming through now, now. Like, that Executioner is going to make it lose to a loose attack. Whereas in, in its vanilla form or with a Vanquisher, it, it would win. And counter everything that will pass. Yeah, I mean, the Vanquisher or leaving it vanilla is a little more versatile than getting this uh, Executioner. Executioner is certainly nice to have. Maybe if you do a double Lehman Rust play, but I've been finding in my own experience that it's safer to either leave it vanilla or get that Vanquisher. This is, I love this from the war boss though. The war boss isn't doing anything to this Lemon Rust, but he's pushing it all the way back to the base. Commissar went down to the Sluggas up top. It's a 3-0 cap though. It looks like Bad Ash has precious little time to get these VPs back. At a 3-0 cap, it's only going to take, you know, less than a minute for this game to end. Oh. If you had used the bomb in the tree, that would have died. I'm pretty sure I agree with that. Ooh, there goes the Guardsman as well. Grunk slipping up here and there had such a firm grip but suddenly looking like he might be in a bit of trouble depending on how these two tanks play. Tank bus is, is the correct purpose, definitely. Alright, Badash is in a good position as far as army and engagements, but, but he he's needs still, to go still get that VP. He's pushing this western side of the map, I guess, assuming he can get both the VPs. But I honestly really feel like one of those shooter boy squads should have gone to the eastern part of the map and taken that back. Oh, oh man. And, oh dear, Spotter goes down. Bad action. Oh, clutch this, but he needs to cap. He needs, he needs to, cap. to cap right now, and he can take this game and bring it on back into his favor. The Shooter I mean, Boys are going for the cap. Demon Rust defending the, uh, the VP. Smart. Yeah, he just needs to get. He needs to send a squad to the east. There's nothing over there. And, uh, and I mean, moving to defend Bad Ash is even just back off with the Shooter Boys because he sees the Lehman Rust coming. They'll probably lose a lot of models and have to retreat uh, if they do go uh, forward into that Lehman Rust's range. Bad Ash doesn't so. have this luxury of time. He needs to do something. He's kind of just idling around. Seems to be a little indecisive. A moment of ambivalence could cost him the game here. He's prioritized getting that power back, but man, he needs the VPs. Yeah. Oh man, the Lemon Rust gets a full Executioner volley off on that pile of Shooter Boys, and boy did it hurt. Those squads have to fall back off the map, and despite having minimal forces, Grunk is in a good position to hold on to this game. Warball's finally going for the cap, but will the Catechins be enough to stop him? They can certainly knock him back and keep him off the point for a while, but I don't think if they can engage, uh, win a straight up melee. Lemon Rust in a bit of peril. Taking tank buster shots, taking looted tank shots. But still, again, nothing capping. Weird Boy, the slug is moving in. I'm not sure what they're doing. Ooh, this barrage. could be a clutch tank buster barrage right on top of the tank. It moves, but it still is in range of that looted tank. Looted tank has its rear armor. It needs to spin around. Whichever these tanks go down could determine the end of the game. 
Because Lego Boy is nearly dead as well, but they get out of there with eight health. Wow. Catachins did get uh, pulled back from that war boss, but the caps are going down. Lemon Rust is getting fixed up with the Lord Commissar. Ooh, Lord Commissar upgraded with the Emperor's Wrath right now, and a second looter tank coming out there. I mean, that Emperor's Wrath would be good for just, like, denying the VP, since at this point, Brunk, he can't really, I don't think he can really win on fights, but the best chance he would have would be just to deny VPs. Unfortunately, War Boss about to go down. That's bad for him at this point in the game. He needs to back that Luda that Demon Rust also. Tank is still very low. Luda Tank may have to go down. Yeah, nice I'm flare. Playing. Very nice flare. That Executioner doesn't do nothing uh, to armor. It still oh, does something. No. Not effective. I just realized he should have put the flare fl slightly further back so that it got to the tank, but not his own Executioner. Yeah, he if he had positioned the executioner. that a little better. Oh, it's so close. It's nice idea, though. Oh, now this Lehman Rust taking a little too much. Oh, oh here comes a big Emperor's out. Wrath right on top of the Shooter Boys. They react quickly, but take huge losses. Or pits go everywhere. Let's move it out. So, Grunk going for War Gear oh. and loses his Commissar. Oh, man, that's a uh -oh. poor decision. Tank Buster's still pressuring that Lehman Russ, and Grunt just doesn't have enough to hold the map at this point. Yeah. There's I mean, another tank on the field. The War Boss is down. Doesn't it doesn't. <laughs> but uh, it can certainly blast like the, the hell out of some catechins. Much like the main blade, it does not cap. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I wish they. Be, I wish Relic made the main blade cap. That would be so balanced. <laughs> nice dodge. Can you force these Tank Busters off? Well, oh, Tank Buster's in. about to go down. Oh, go down. more Orc bits. Oh, uh, really when I need to go down. Need oh and my goodness. Looks like Badash is actually backing off a little bit. Wants to oh, reinforce his shooter boys. I guess he's going to be counting on uh, being able to disrupt or force off anything that tries to capture this VP. He needs to get Certainly that boss the, back uh, up, and just there he goes. He purchases the boss. He just if you can just sit the boss in that tank on the eastern point, and that'll be pretty much it. Luda tank moving up again, gonna try to put a little more pressure on this Lehman Rust, which has constantly yeah, been good repairing. Flanking maneuver. Very good flanking maneuver. That is a dead Lehman Rust. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I didn't even see that, but now I see it. Yeah, that's not yeah. gonna help that ability, Fist of Rockets. <laughs> Especially now when he's moving out of range. Mine's going down. Commissar go trying to take out that Luda tank with the power fist. A couple more right. hits. That's if this Lehman Rust survives, I'm going to be baffled. Oh no. Guardsman okay. squad going down. There it goes out of control. Oh my gosh. And ow, oh, Grunk. Grunk. In some ways he gave out the way. Grunk is yeah. trying to play the strategy to try to save more red up, not use so many flares, cap stuff, and then put down mines, because mines is the one is the thing that is going to reduce his mobility down to nothing. Wow. Oof, what a what hurts. a match, but <laughs> Certainly getting some good games out of this tournament, though. I mean, I you know, I, I feel like he just, he shouldn't have skipped Tier 2. Uh, I mean, the tank came in and, like, just about had an impact, but he kind of just sat back during that Tier 3 upgrade. Didn't really put any pressure anywhere, and, you know, a couple bad plays after that, I think, Badash I took think the game. The key, the key thing is, actually, like, Gronk, yeah, lost a couple squads. He went T3, so that those are resources that are basically just kind of almost thrown away. He could have invested them into like two new squads and been in a, in a reasonable position. But Badash gave him something straight back. Badash had.